Sometimes the jejunum is a little difficult to differentiate from the ilium, both grossly as well as microscopically, because there often is not a slam bang, uh, drastic change in their appearance. Often it's gradual, but the duodenum is slam bang, differentiable from the jejunum and ilium, because it is the only part of the small intestine that has submucosal mucus glands, like you see here. These are Brunner glands. Otherwise, this follows the typical pattern of uh, a small bowel or a gastrointestinal organ of any type. You have a quite delicate finger-like papillary array of mucosal villi. You can see there is a lot of loose connective tissue cells and inflammatory cells uh, between those uh, glandular, columnar glandular epithelium. You can also see, even from this power, that you could see both uh, absorptive cells as well as mucus cells, goblet cells. The goblet cells standing out quite nicely, which are mucinous, but the majority of the cells here are not mucinous, they're absorptive cells. Also notice that you will see a lot of loose connective tissue. This is all lamina propria, like we see here. If you wanted to make a count of the lamina propria, you would see a lot of lymphocytes, a lot of plasma cells, occasional macrophages, um, as well as the normal amount of cells you would normally see in blood, like eosinophils, red cells, neutrophils, yada, yada, yada. In addition, you can see now there is a quite an abrupt stoppage of the mucosa in which you see a thin rim of muscularis mucosae. You are now entering the submucosa. Notice the submucosa is very rich in these mucus glands as well as the submucosa normally having loose connective tissue and blood vessels. There's an artery, there's a vein. That could possibly be a lymphatic or a vein. If a thin-walled extremely thin-walled blood vessel has blood in it, it's probably a vein. If it doesn't have anything in it, it could be a vein or a lymphatic. And then you can see another abrupt transition from the submucosa into both a circular as well as a longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. You know this is circular because the nuclei look spindly, and you know this is longitudinal or cut transverse to its uh, axis because the nuclei look quite round. You can see perhaps a couple little ganglion cells between the circular and longitudinal muscle layer like you see in the uh, other parts of the uh, bowel, especially large bowel. And then once again, you see a lot of loose connective tissue and blood vessels. Because the uh, duodenum is primarily retroperitoneal, you're not likely to see much uh, true serosa or mesothelial line surface because 90-something uh, percent of the duodenum is retroperitoneal. Only that first part that has the little, what they call the bulb of the duodenum, or first part, uh, might have a little bit of uh, serosa on it, so it could be truly called peritoneum. Otherwise, this connective tissue in most of the duodenum can just be called adventitia, and I thank you very much.